Well, uh, the last four days have been interesting, at, uh, to say the least, okay? And um, uh, I, I think it's uh, really um, uh, interesting, some of the activities I've heard. A lot of commerce going on, a lot of great meetings, a lot of, me uh, a lot of networking that had not previously uh, occurred between individuals. Um, retailers have been meeting with retailers and learning uh, the, their secrets, so to speak, and OEMs with OEMs, third-party service providers trying to show their solutions. Um, so it's been, a, I think, a very enjoyable week for all that's been here. Our feedback so far has been pretty positive. I just want to share something with you guys um, uh, because we've heard, we hear some, some complaints from time to time on issues, but uh, we would love to say that we apologize for uh, asking for your ID each time you come through registration, but our insurance company has told us we need to look at your ID. And you know, um, if uh, you think about if a little prevention goes a long ways, and uh, maybe if security had been a little bit stronger at some places like um, a school ground or a movie theater, some people might be living today. One of the things we try to do is if there's ever someone who's a disgruntled employee, we just don't want them here, okay? And I'm not saying that any of you have ever ticked off any employees, but sometimes it just happens. Right now, there's some guy running loose in California who's disgruntled because of who knows. Someone didn't smile at him at the right time, and now he's just picking people off with a gun. Now, I'm not saying that gun's bad, okay? Um, if someone's, uh, if I'm not hunting, I think I would want to have a gun, okay? But uh, I'm just simply saying that we try to make sure that while you're here, you're in a safe environment. I hope no one's been hurt, no one's been shot, stabbed, okay? No one's been hit. All right, Terry just hit one of his employees. I saw it, I got it. Anyway, we try to do that. So sorry that you got frustrated that you had to show your ID, but we're trying to protect. Well, our uh, keynote speaker for today uh, is uh, from uh, CEA, as we call it, Consumer Electronics Association. A lot of people don't know who CEA is. Uh, it's the group that runs CES, Consumer Electronics Show, one of the largest electronics shows, if not the largest electronics show in the world. Now, there might be some folks over in Germany who say they have a bigger event, but I don't think so. I think it's CES that, uh, that that's the bigger event. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about their organization before I introduce Steve, okay? Um, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Steve Koning has, um, he's, uh, he has a lot of knowledge, and that's why we invited him here. But I want to talk to you about his organization. Um, each year, they give the association a 20 by 20 booth um, at no charge. And the reason why they do that is they want us to educate their members about reverse logistics. And I think that's incredible, okay? So for I, one, I would like to applaud Steve for, uh, for that, okay? Now... The first year we went there was, I think, in 2010, and we had a little 10 by 10 booth, and people would be coming up to us and saying, you know, what's a reverse logistics? That's sort of, that's sort of a joke. How can you be reverse in logistics? And we'd go, well, you know, it means something more than that. And uh, what's the company? Hoot, H-O-O-T, do you guys know them? They, they used to do something sort of in a sarcastic way. They reported uh, back in 2011, no, 2012, they, they uh, highlight the, seven, the five top misnamed companies. And, and we got in on that award. They said, you know, reverse logistics, what's that? A truck driving in reverse. And I sort of thought, ooh, whoop, don't you know that what it is? It's sort of embarrassing on their, in their case. But they gave us some exposure. So all exposure is good exposure, right? You know, even when you got your pants down, it's good exposure. Okay, all right. Southern exposure. Anyway, 
So uh, we are tickled uh, about the last four years that we've been exhibiting. The last couple of years, we've had a 20 by 20 booth that they've given us. They didn't have to. I think our partnership contract didn't state that size, but they gave us a larger one. And you, our members, come and help us run that booth. We could not do it with our staff. There's just too many people asking questions. So if you're a member of the association, you can come each year and talk about what your company does in the arena of reverse logistics. This past year we had um, eight kiosks that really uh, highlights um, each individual company. And some companies will work in our booth for a couple hours and then we have a private meeting room so you can meet with your clients. So if you're, I know that CES is not a good place to find business in reverse logistics. And I know that's why none of you exhibit there. But if you come and you're wanting to meet some people, it's a good place to make contacts at senior management. And they'll usually say, I see the problem. I don't know who does reverse logistics, right? Senior management not, never, never knows who does reverse logistics. But I'm going to go back and find out who that is. And so it's sort of top down. It's a little bit better direction. So we're going to keep driving that activity. We'll be there in 2014. Uh, January 7th is January 7th um, and 7th through 10th and it's a good time to network and this year we're probably calling reaching out to some of our members to speak on the subjects of reverse logistics at CES but in order to be a speaker on that part you need to be working the booth because I, I just can't do it by myself so CES plays a big part of us and is Tony here is Tony Stepp. There's Tony back there, one of our board members. Tony's the one who built that relationship between us and CEA. Okay? So, <laughs> so um, now you know some of the things that our board members do. They do good things like that. Build, build those type of relationships. So let, let me introduce to you Steve and Stephen and some of the things that he's done in the past. Okay? Steve is the Director of uh, Industry Analysis at, at the Consumer Electronics Association. He directs the CE Marketing Program, overseeing all strategic and operational aspects of the service. He also directs CEA's semi-annual CE Industry Forecast, and that's one of the reasons why we have him here today. As part of the market research team, he also supports CEA's consumer research initiatives from study design to data analysis. He's a frequent speaker at lots of conferences. And one, one conference I told him recently, I don't want you to go to that conference. I'm, I'm just kidding. It's, it's a company that tries to compete with us, okay? And uh, so I said, come hang out with us more. We'll, we'll do better things for you. Um, he has a lot of analytical knowledge uh, that he's put together in the last 15 years and a lot of variety of experience in, in the CE industry. And he was uh, recently named to the Deoscope Magazine's 40 under 40 list of industry executives. So that's, that's sort of a, a feather in his cap uh, for his career, too. Prior to joining CEA, he worked as an analytic consultant for uh, uh, cons. Comscore Media Metrics, and earlier as a technology industry analyst and account manager at NDP Group, PC Data. In addition, Steve was a senior editor at CMP Media's former Computer Retailer Week. He also worked at ARS Inc. as a competitive analysis focused on the IT industry, a native of Texas. He holds a Bachelor of Business Administration and Marketing from the University of North, North Texas. He currently resides in all of all places, Fairfax, Virginia. Steve, can you come up to the podium? Sure. Thank you. Well, Steve? Thank you for that kind of introduction. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Steve, I just, I just want to get a couple of things off my chest here with you. I, I know you're a good guy, and I'm not trying to embarrass you or anything, but rumor... Rumor has it, because we always try to find out something before you come here, because we were like con concerned that you might be a lousy speaker. Oh my! So we yeah. kind of, you know, we we probed to see is he a good speaker, does he present well? So we found out you were good at that. 
but we're we're asking people, you know, just some nuances. Is he if there's a question that's asked, will he get mad and throw something? We want to make sure you're not going to do something crazy. But as we go through that, sometimes people share things with us that we just wonder about. I see. Okay. And and I thought I would just ask you about that here. And I, I know I should have done it before, but um, it's just bothering me a little bit. Something about a bunny suit? You, no. <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? Uh, yes, my a little bit of trivia. Yeah, by the way, you're you're getting my whole life story here, so uh, it's it's a bit it's a bit embarrassing and uh, revealing. Well, I mean, but, uh, yeah, don't so, worry uh, because of that. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, my high school job was uh, at Six Flags Over Texas at a theme park, and I was Bugs Bunny. So there it is. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I would say is that in the Q and A, you're not allowed to ask me what's up, Doc. Okay, let's just get that sorted right away. Okay, and so I also have heard that you have uh, two daughters, but they were, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, and I know this might make you feel a little bit better, and you guys be sensitive. You know, kids, when they're born sometimes, you know, they, they have like a little, you know, little mole on their face or they'll have an extra toe, and, and we just love them, right? We just want to love them. But, Steve, I, I heard that your children were born with, like, fur. four legs. Yeah, and, and fur, yeah, yeah. We have, my wife and I have two canine kids, uh, two wonderful girls, Rhodesian Ridgebacks is the breed, and their names are Roxy and Harley. And they're both big girls, about 90 pounds, and... If those of you, for those of you who are familiar with the breed, you, you know what I'm talking about. They're kind of a copper color, and they're so named because they have a ridge down their back where the hair grows opposite. So it's kind of like reverse logistics, right? It's going the opposite way. So that was a nice tie-in, right? With so, reverse logistics. So, so they really sort of look like a, a razorback hog? Uh, well, sort of. But they are indeed the national breed of South Africa. They were bred to help hunters hunt lions. They're a sight hound. So they're quite powerful dogs, but actually, when you get down to it, very loving, gentle companions, yeah. He says they're docile. <laughs> okay, so, so something like this. So his wife's walking through the park with these two 90-pound dogs. You're a mugger. What do you think? What would you do if you were the mugger? Keep walking. Keep walking, Okay. <laughs> And so, sort of a nice, friendly dog to have with you. So, yeah. having mentioned that to you, so a couple of uh, nice, furry kids that he has around to watch over him. Bug Buzzy, but, I mean, a bunny suit. Have you ever gotten the bunny suit around the dogs? I don't think I would try that, no. Oh, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. No, Steve, thank you. we're glad to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Galen. Yes, thank you. And thank all of you for joining me on this final day of the RLA show. I know it's a big ask after a long week to, to get out of bed in the morning, as Galen was saying, with, uh, with all the partying and things that are uh, inherent in a, in a Vegas experience. Uh, I'm definitely feeling the love in the room, I have to say, and happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Hopefully uh, you've all sent a card to your spouse or something like that. I know my, my wife is like, where's my card? You're out of town. But uh, we're here to talk about the consumer and what's really going on in their mind and, and why do we want to do that. Really, the, the, the idea is, is that if we can understand the psychology of the consumer when we're thinking about product purchases in the technology arena, that we can really reduce the amount of product that is coming your way and we can improve that bottom line. Galen and I were just talking about uh, over, uh, in a, in, I guess over, we were just talking a little bit earlier this morning, in fact, but that 3 to 15% of the bottom line is kind of relegated to kind of that reverse logistics type function. So no shortage of, of dollars being spent in this arena or saved. So I think you'll agree, if we can get the slide advancer to work. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Just had to point it in the right direction. So I think this is going to be a fantastic journey, but our vehicle for this journey is not going to be a yellow submarine. 
uh, it will in fact be market research. And that's something that we do a great deal of at CEA. Whether it's consumer research, industry forecasts, you name it, we have a variety of research tools that describe really not only what's going on on the consumer front and at the retail store, but also out there in the industry at large. Mm -hmm. 